let's think of a capacitor which is initially charged and there is no any no any connection to nowhere so suppose we have plus q charge on the upper plate and the minus q charge on the lower plate what we do is an interesting uh, we keep the distance uh, d is fixed but the down plate is moved horizontally uh, in let's say uh, in the positive x direction in this direction uh, a little bit distance x let's say what happens to the capacitance so <clears throat> what happens to the capacitance is well initially we have we have this uniform electric field between the plates and if you uh, slowly slide the down plate to the right for example then these pair charges plus and minus charges want to keep their interactions the same okay for example if they pair up if one uh, plus charge is paired up with minus charge uh, then these pairs will try to keep their interactions fixed or the same that means when we move uh, the plate uh, these charges will accumulate on the only on the overlapping regions uh, if you look at uh, in the vertical direction these charges uh, these pair charges will accumulate for example for the uh, upper plate uh, so that uh, this region the overlapping region will contain all the charges okay uh, when we of course um, slide one of the plates uh, in horizontal direction uh, there is no any uh, change in the uh, charges because there is no con contact then <clears throat> the total charge will remain the same but the thing is as I said uh, these pair charges uh, will try to keep their uh, interaction so that they will collect on both the upper plate and the lower plate they will collect on uh, one region of the plates uh, and these regions are overlapping region you see in the uh, initial uh, uh, configuration all the uh, area for the upper and lower plate overlaps if you look from uh, in the vertical direction but when, of course when you slide this overlapping region uh, will change and these charges uh, will accumulate only on the overlapping regions okay so <clears throat> let's call the initial uh, area overlapping area as a1 or the total area of one of the plates you can think these plates as a square of size l and let's a1 is equal to l square and you move a distance let's say x then the overlapping region uh, will reduce itself to l minus x if you move uh, the, the lower plate as, as, as a distance x then the, of course the overlapping region will decrease so let's call this uh, area of the overlapping regions of both plates as a2 so what happens to the electric field when you keep the distance d d is the same uh, well we know that uh, the electric field between uh, oppositely charged plates does not depend on the distance they only depend uh, on the uh, charge density of the one of the plates and it, it is just uh, sigma divided by epsilon zero when we do this sliding and since the total charge will accumulate on a smaller surface area okay we have the same a uh, number of charges uh, the charge will remain the fixed but the charges when you slide will move toward one end again um, you can you can say that these plates are in electrostatic equilibrium okay 
The only thing is that these charges are not distributed evenly for the second case because of the uh, electrostatic uh, 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 attraction between the pair charges on both plates. Okay, but the thing is, the both plates are in electrostatic electrostatic equilibrium. That means the charges are not moving anywhere. The charges are steady. So as long as the charges are steady on a, on, an, on a material, then we can say that this material is in electrostatic equilibrium. All right. So <coughs> let's call the uh, charge density of the first configuration as sigma 1 and the charge density of the second com configuration sigma 2. Of course, when we do this, uh, the sliding, the charge densities on the overlapping regions only will change. For example, the charge density for this configuration will be larger in, of course, only this region, okay, on the overlapping region because the all charges are now uh, uh, restricted to occupy on a smaller area. That means uh, the charge density is larger, okay. The total charge again for both configuration is the same the total charge does not change and if this is A1 and this is A2 the overlapping regions area of the overlapping regions and if A2 is less than A1 then sigma 2 is larger than sigma 1 because the total charge now are restricted on a smaller surface area and let's call uh, the electric field strength in the first case as E1 and in the second uh, case the second configuration as E2, of course, uh, because the electric field strength only depends on the charge density of one of the surfaces. In the second case, since the charge density increases, electric field strength E2 will uh, be increasing and E2 will be larger than E1. Now, what about the potential difference between the plates in the second case? Well, since we keep the distance between the plates the same in the second case too and we know that E2 is larger than uh, E1 in the second case and since uh, the potential difference between the plates is proportional to uh, the electric field and D to, to be more explicit V just V is equal to the electric field strength times D that means the V2 in the second case, the potential difference between the plates will be larger than V1. So V2 is larger than V1, the potential difference, because the potential difference is proportional to the electric field strength. Now let's think of how the change in the electrostatic energy, electrostatic potential energy of the capacitor changes. Okay. So we know we can express this electrostatic potential energy of a parallel plate capacitor in terms of its charge and the capacitance. And this is one half the charge total charge on one of the plates Q square divided by the capacitance. Or instead of this, we can use the field energy density expression for the potential energy of, of any region of the space which has electric field, uniform electric field, and this was, remember, just proportional to the uh, square of the strength of the electric field times the volume of the region that this electric field exists. Uh, let's, let's use the second one, okay? It is just one half epsilon zero times E1 squared times the volume. All right, so we can say that in the first case, if the electrostatic potential energy is U1, then U1 is proportional to the E1 square times A1, because in fact the volume is A1 times D, but since D is not changing in, in both cases, just omit this D, and we can express this proportional to just concerning uh, E1 and the uh, area A1, because these are changing. So that means <coughs> since E1 squared is proportional to sigma 1 squared, which is the charge density of the, over the surface, then this is in turn we can express this uh, proportionality sigma 1 squared times A1. 
and of course we can write down the same uh, proportionality for the electricity potential energy of the second case u2 it will be proportional to sigma 2 squared by uh, times a2 and so we have two terms in the expressions of electrostatic potential energy uh, the charge density and a the area uh, we can express for example for the first case uh, sigma 1 times sigma 1 a1 but we know that sigma 1 times a1 is nothing but the total charge on one of the plates so we can express uh, this uh, proportionality sigma 1 squared times a1 as just sigma 1 times q so the expression the proportionality for the electrostatic energy reduces only to one variable then in that case because the charge the, the total charge is not changing so uh, this expression has only sigma 1 which is the changing quantity uh, for two configurations then we may express this, these proportionalities as u1 is proportional to sigma 1 times q and u2 is proportional to sigma 2 times q and q's are the same for both cases and the only change in uh, changing thing is just the surface charge density and you see uh, the result is emitted now uh, u2 is proportional to sigma 2 and u1 is proportional to sigma 1 these proportionality constants are the same for both cases and since sigma 2 is larger than sigma 1 that means the second case in the second case the electrostatic potential energy will be larger than the electrostatic potential energy of the first configuration that means when you slide the bottom plane a distance x that means you are increasing the electrostatic potential energy and that means to increase this potential energy you have to do some work right because you are going from one configuration which has lower energy to another configuration which has larger energy just it is you can see that just moving a, a object from height which is low to another height which is higher than the first case you're just increasing the potential energy and in terms of these energies it is what we see in here uh, is just the same uh, we, we are just increasing the potential energy of the system so that means we have to do work or if you s want to slide this lower plate then you have to pull it you have to pull it against some force okay I'm not discussing what this force is in nature but of course you will uh, immediately uh, realize that this force in nature is just electrostatic force between these charges because you're making these charges closer to each other and of course if you want to bring uh, the same charges closer uh, which, uh, which are closing which are closer to each other then you have to do some uh, you have to spend some uh, force on them right all right so we can express this uh, uh, relation between these two uh, potential energy more explicitly as the ratio of the uh, surface charge density is u, uh, u2 is equal to the uh, ratio of the surface charge density in the second case divided by uh, sigma and you have to multiply this the uh, potential energy of the first case okay well of course uh, by that expression you can easily say that if you increase the charge density twice then you will increase the potential energy twice that is uh, just there is a linear relationship well the next question is then you can ask to yourself what is the work done to move this plate a distance x right and if you move uh, from from x0 to some distance x then of course since you are overcoming some kind of force this is force is, is electrostatic in nature then you have to do some work because you apply a force to move some object at distance x and the definition of the work is nothing but the work times uh, the distance x but the thing is here uh, the work is very vari variable okay and well without considering about the uh, work uh, times uh, the uh, position expression you can calculate this work just by taking the difference 
of the potential energy between these two cases. Okay, if you want to calculate the work done by you, then you just uh, take the difference of the potential energy of the second case uh, to the potential energy of the first case, u2 minus u1, will be the amount of work you have to do. But what is u2 in terms of uh, the charge and the capacitance? Well, the capacitance in the second case, since we have a smaller area, a2, then this a2, if this distance is x, is just L times L minus X because plates are square of size uh, side L then if you decrease one side by X that means the area uh, will be equal to not L square but L times L minus X so you may express the potential energy of the uh, capacitor in terms of its charge and the area and the distance between the plates by this expression and you will um, subtract this quantity, which is the initial uh, capacitance of this configuration, which is nothing but one half q square d divided by epsilon zero l square. I'm not just, uh, you know, uh, mentioning what this expression is. This is you already know uh, the capacitance inverse of the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. So take this difference. Then you have uh, x in the first expression, and this is easy when you do some algebra you will see that this work done is one half q square divided by epsilon zero l square which is the potential energy of the first configuration right because uh, i think i have done a mistake in here i have just forgot uh, to multiply the denominator by d, so there must be d in here, right? Then you can see that the uh, first expression, this part, okay, in, in which there is no uh, term x, this part is nothing but the potential energy of the first configuration, and if you multiply this by this quantity x divided by l minus x, then you find the total work to be done to move the lower plate a distance x.